Hi, I'm Olivia Purcell. I'm Taylor Van Wierkam. I'm Michael Penniman. And I'm Marissa Falter. Our project is where it pays to go to college. We are seeking to answer if the type of university a student chooses to attend affects their starting salary after their graduation. We use the measure of the starting median salary of graduates from various party, liberal arts, engineering, Ivy League, and state schools. The data that we will analyze was obtained from Kaggle.com. The data set is from where it pays to go to college. The method that we used to analyze the data was multiple regression through Excel. The conclusion that we came to through analyzing our data and the answer that we came up with, the type of university a student chooses to attend does affect their starting salary after graduation. In today's day and age, it is expected that future employees earn a college degree in order to be successful in the workplace. Students make a big decision and investment when they decide where to attend college. Specifically, when students look into potential schools, they look at items such as location, price, and course offerings. In order to help students maximize their return on investment, when it comes to choosing a college to attend, the goal of our analysis is to determine if the type of university a student attends affects their starting salary after graduation. So for our project, we were wanting to analyze if where a student attends college may have an effect on their starting salary. Before doing this, the main question we had was, based upon the type of school chosen to attend, should one expect a higher or lower starting salary than the average for their major? To do this, we measured starting salary median of various party liberal, liberal arts, engineering, Ivy League, and state schools. And before doing the regression, we assumed that where a student attends college is not the only factor. Other factors could include students in STEM major or students with a higher GPA earning a higher salary. Our data was accessed from Kaggle.com, originally from the Wall Street Journal, and included numerical and categorical data. In the Excel spreadsheet, there were 270 rows and eight unique columns and our focus in this analysis was on starting median salary and school type. We used dummy variables for the different categorical data in order to get the right numbers for our regression. And in this analysis, we used the multiple regression uh, to analyze the correlation uh, because that allowed for predicting and we can apply that to hypothetical situations we use that instead of hypothesis testing or descriptive statistics because it would not allow for room for guessing or hypothetical situations. All right, so the method that we used was multiple regression and using the types of schools, as in engineering, party school, Ivy League school, liberal arts schools, state schools, those were the independent variable and then our starting salary was the dependent variable. We chose state school for the base to get positive coefficients. Um, we were looking for p-values that are in 0 0.05 certificate level. And as you can see, all of them are within, or all of them are significant, except for party school. Um, and then when we look up at the R squared value, that is telling us how much variation the model explains in starting salary. So our R squared is 0 0.502, and we're not very concerned with it being relatively low because there's a lot of other variables that go into that. Um, so basically the other 49.8% in variation could be due to things such as GPA and what major they chose and a lot of other factors. 
When we look at the residual plots, they appear relatively normal, signing no signing or showing no signs of concern. Um, there's no distinct patterns, and there's they're relatively constant. Uh, the re if you look at the Ivy League and the party school residuals, the plots are there's less of them as opposed to liberal arts and uh, engineering, and that can be explained because in our pool of data, there was a lot less Ivy League schools and party schools to uh, compare the data to. Um, so in conclusion, the, these models represent uh, a good set of data. After an, our analysis of the data set, we determined that the Tech College of Student Ascents does have an effect on their future starting salary. Um, through our model, we determined that state schools on average have a starting salary of $44,126. Through our analysis, we determined that the p-values for engineering and Ivy League schools are far more significant. Um, this means that students who attend engineering schools on average make $14,931 more than state schools, while students who attend Ivy League schools make an average of $16,348 more than state schools. Also, in our conclusion, we determined that the PE value for liberal arts is borderline significant. This means, on average, students who attend liberal arts schools make $1,620 more than state schools while the p-value for party schools is not significant, meaning that the starting salary for students is similar to state schools. Um, after our analysis, we determined that one weakness of this data set is that it failed to provide information on other variables that may affect starting salaries, such as GPA and major. So in the future, an alternative would be to find a data set that includes such information. So in order to optimize their investment, we determined that the Tech College of Student Ascents does have an effect on their future starting salary. Um, after our analysis, we concluded this is the rank of schools in which you would expect to receive the most amount for a starting salary for the least amount, which would be state schools. In the end, we recommend that students choose either an Ivy League school or an engineering school in order to maximize their investment, but also realize that other things such as GPA and major has an effect on your starting salary after graduation.